Welcome back to 3.2 Transformations. We're looking at reflecting now. Uh, reflecting, that's just a fancy way of talking about flipping. So we're flipping this graph. And I'm recording on a laptop here, so hopefully it works out for you. Okay, first thing. Writing the coordinates of each point as we reflect or flip each point above the x-axis and then we're going to flip it about the y-axis. So let's start first with our x-axis points. So let's highlight our x-axis and let's take A. Point A is negative 4 and 3. So negative 4 comma uh, 3. If we're going to flip that over the x-axis, that's going to go down. It's still going to stay right underneath the same x, but it's now going to go down to that point 2. So it's going to be now negative 4, comma, negative 3. Notice what happened to the x value and flip the y value. Let's try the next one. We'll call that a prime. Point b, it's directly right above. Again, it's going to flip down. It's still going to be at 0 on the x, but now it's going to be flipped over the x-axis to negative 2. So the point of uh, 0, comma, 2 is going to become 0, comma, negative 2. Again, look at what happens to the x and to the y values. Point C. Point C is on the x-axis. If we flip it over the x-axis, it's going to stay in the same spot. So negative 2, comma, 0 is going to flip over the x-axis and remain at negative 2, comma, 0. And what do we call points that don't change? Invariant points. So right there we have an invariant point in this reflection. And point D, oops, point D now, we're going to take that and flip that up and over. So now that point of negative 5, comma, negative 4, is going to become negative 5, comma, positive 4. And great, right there. Again, we should call that D prime. Oops. And this will be a B prime. And this one is invariant at C prime. Let's switch colors here now. Now we're going to look at doing each point in the Y axis. So let's highlight our Y axis and flip those ones. So now A, instead of flipping down, we're going to flip it over to the right side now of the axis. It was negative 4, comma, 3. It's now going to flip over and become 4, comma, 3. Same Y value, but a different X value. We'll call that A double prime. Point B is on the Y axis. If we flip that, it's going to remain at 0, comma, 2. It's invariant. Notice the invariant points. They're on the axis that we're flipping. Point C is at negative 2. Now it's going to be at positive 2. 2, comma, 0. And point D was at negative 5. Now it's going to be at positive 5 and the same negative 4. Oops, right here. And we'll call that D double prime. Now going from just flipping the points, we're going to flip the whole graph this time. So every single point is going to flip over the axes. So for the first one, we're going to do over the x-axis. Let's start that. Let's highlight every x-axis. Let's do all three of them in the x-axis. And again, I'll stick with blue for this one. So if we flip it in the x-axis, that means it's going to be anything that's above is now going to be below. Anything that's below is now going to be above. And the place that's going to stay the same 
is where it's on that about axis, whatever we flip about or on. So we'll keep that as our invariant point. Let's take some key points such as our y-intercept. The y-intercept was at 3. It's now going to be down at negative 3. And we're going to be going straight through there. The slope is the same. It's the same steepness, but it went to a negative. And the and the y-intercept is also negative now. So our new equation is going to be y equals negative 2x minus 3. Let's look at this new one here. Okay, again, anything that is on the x-axis, we're going to keep it as invariant for this. Flip the rest. Anything below flips up. Anything above flips down. Let's look at our key points. This vertex was at 3 and negative 4. That's going to flip up to 3 and positive 4. The y-intercept looks like it's at 5, which it is from the example. We're going to be down at negative 5. Up and down through there. So it just flipped right over. Let's look at our next graph. Again, any of those zeros are going to remain as zeros. Anything that's below flips up. Oh, not a good angle. There we go. That's better. Let me re redo that one. And straight up. Whoop. And there's a max, so it's going to become a min. Straight down, it's at 5. We're going to go down to there. Let's connect those dots. Back down, and 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 7, 8. So it looks like about there. Perfect. Okay, so let's go now and start reflecting about the y-axis. Take green for this one again. Doing the same thing. Taking our graph, anything that's on the y-axis is going to stay on the y-axis. And then our intercept here was between 1 and 2, so it's going to also be between 1 and 2. And we can connect those dots there. And again with this one, Notice that we can pick off the equation again. We know that it has the same y-intercept of plus 3. But this time, the slopes is also negative. They're very similar. They are at the same angle, but different y-intercepts. Looking at the next one, taking our original and our y-intercept stays as the y-intercept. Our x-intercepts become negative. So negative 1 and negative 5. Our vertex was at 3. It's now going to be at negative 3. And still at negative 4. And we connect all those dots. Done. And last one here. Again, y-intercept. Find that invariant point always first to start with. Then do your x-intercepts. This negative 2 becomes a positive 2, the positive 2 becomes a negative 2, the positive 1 becomes a negative 1, and then flip all of your max and mins as well. Right between 1 and 2, there was a min, so between 1 and 2, there's going to be a min over here as well. There is a max here at, what is that, just before the 1, so max over there. And let's start joining our dots. This part up here, I'm going to take this point and whip it way over to, what is that, it's about 3, 2, 3, right there. And this point way down here, 1, 2 and a half. So I'm going to go 1, 2 and a half. There we go. Now I've got enough to connect all of my dots together. So this is going up, 
through here to there, back down to there, to there, and whoops, and there we go. A little bit hard to see that, but it's the green line. And I'll let your favorite lady explain that next part for you. A graph of a function may be reflected in the x-axis or in the y-axis. Consider the graph of y equals root x minus 2. The graph of y equals negative root x minus 2 is the image of the graph of y equals root x minus 2 after a reflection in the x-axis. The point 6, 2 lies on the graph of y equals root x minus 2. The corresponding point on the graph of y equals negative root x minus 2 is 6, negative 2. Notice the negative in the y value. The graph of y equals root negative x minus 2 is the image of the graph of y equals root x minus 2 after a reflection in the y-axis. The point 6, 2 lies on the graph of y equals root x minus 2. The corresponding point on the graph of y equals root negative x minus 2 is negative 6, 2. Notice the negative x value. So to bring it all together, when we have, looking at this here, if we're starting with our function f of x, any function, doesn't matter what type of graph you have, quadratic, linear, cubic, uh, radical, rational, any type of graph, if you take it and you have a negative in front of the f of x, what that's going to do is it's going to always be, every single time, is it's going to be a reflection in the x-axis. So if the negative's in front, what we're actually doing is we're taking the y and making it a negative y. Or in other words, like I keep saying from before, if we're doing a replacement, it's a y replacement. This is a vertical reflection. So the y in, becomes a negative y. What you're doing is you're taking it from y equals f of x into negative y equals f of x. And then you're taking the negative over to the right side to bring it over to the right side of the equation. But the y becomes a negative y. Or in English, multiply every y value by negative 1. If we're looking at a reflection the other way, over the y-axis, What we're doing is we're taking and we're replacing every x value in the original with a negative x value. The x becomes a negative x. Or for our replacements, x, because it's going to be now horizontal, the x becomes negative x. One thing to always remember, if we're doing a reflection, the graph is exact same shape, or how they say it here, it's congruent to the original graph. All right, let's do some sketching here now. So here's the graph. Sketch the image after reflection in the y-axis. And then we got to state the domain and range. So let's just highlight that axis that we're using in the y-axis. Or on the diploma, a lot of times they'll use the word about the y-axis. So I'll just bring that word in there as well for you. Take every single point and flip it over the y-axis. Okay, so this point, 5 and 2, becomes negative 5 and 2. Invariant point is going to be on that axis that we're flipping it. And this point here, negative 3 and 1, is going to be positive 3 and 1. This point goes to there. This point here is going to flip all the way over to there. Connect all your dots. Okay, so let's look at the domain and range. Original domain and range was x was between negative 3 and 5. So now on that blue graph, when we do the reflection, it's now going to be between negative 5 
and positive 3. So notice that we flipped the two numbers there into negatives. So the negative became positive, positive became negative. And in the original, our range was between, what is that, 2, negative 2, and positive 2. And this is, if we're re reflecting in the y-axis, this is only affecting the x values. The y values all stayed exactly the same. So it's not going to affect the range at all. So it's going to stay as negative 2 all the way to positive 2. Oh boy. So now they're not telling us which way to reflect it. They're not telling which, which axes. So we've got to figure it out for ourselves. So look at the y values and also look at the x value. We've got g of x, g of x. I didn't touch anything to do with the x values. So x stays the same. They're unchanged. But what really happened here is that that negative came from the other side of the equation over here. It actually was negative y equals g of x. So in that case, the y became negative y. As soon as we see that, we know that we're dealing with vertical because it's a y change. If it's vertical, it's got to be going this way. And that's going to be flipping it over the x-axis. So this is a reflection about the x-axis. It's a reflection about or in. Do you remember how everything's kind of been opposite if we were talking about the, uh, the translations? This is also going to be opposite. If we're dealing with a y, it's a reflection in the x-axis. If we're dealing with x, it's a reflection in the y-axis. So let's quickly draw all of them. So again, anything that's on the x-axis will be our invariant point. And now just start flipping everything else. So that was up at 5. Oh, sorry, 6. That's going to be down at 6. This one was at 2, so it's going to be right underneath it at negative 2. And we're just coming right through. And that was at 6, so we've got to get to that point, 6, and right through there. There's our drawing. Domain and range. Original. The original domain was X, E, R. When we flip that, it's still going to remain to be x, e, r for a new one. Our original range was y, e, r. And by flipping this one, we didn't change anything. It's still y, e, r. But which one was thinking of changing? Well, this was vertical. So the one that should be changing, just because it's y, e, r, didn't but we would be looking at the vertical. The domain would not be touched at all in this, in any of the graphs, if we're doing a reflection vertically. Okay, I've already addressed this for you, so please write her down which points are invariant for which reflection. Oh boy, here we go. So the graph of this was reflected in the x-axis. Let's highlight that, because that's important. The x-axis. Let's draw, where's the x-axis? If it's reflected this way, that means that this is going to be a vertical. If it's x-axis, this is vertical. This is talking about a y replacement. And 100% of the time, if we're reflecting about the x-axis, doesn't matter what shape we start with. If we reflect about the y, or sorry, the x-axis, the y is always going to become negative y. The graph, if we needed, wanted to draw it, which we're not asked to, but we will anyways, would look like exactly the same shape. Oops. Exactly the same shape, but just flipped over the x-axis. We take our equation, the original equation, 
and wherever you see a y, put a negative y. So negative y equals 1 over negative 2x squared minus 0 0.5. This does not affect the x in any way. We leave the x exactly as such. And then resolve for the y. All we got to do is take that negative to the other side of the equation. So then y equals negative 1 over negative 2x squared minus 0 0.5. Or if you want, you can put the negative with the numerator. You could also say y equals negative 1 over negative 2x squared minus 0 0.5. And you say, whoa, wait, I got so many negatives happening in here. Why don't we clean this up a little bit? So you've got negative and a negative. Let's factor that out of the denominator. They usually won't leave it as we've got written in there. So we are going to factor out that denominator. So now we have negative 1 over negative bracket 2x squared plus now 0 0.5. Oh, goody. Negative over negative. Hey, that's going to cancel each other off. Now we have 1 over 2x squared plus 0 0.5. That's probably how they're going to have the graph written. So you're going to have to be able to work it through, factor out the negatives, and see that those negatives cancel off. Okay, so for this thinking, think further here. You could use their f of x that they've got from their uh, example. I'm going to switch this up and say, what happens if you went with y equals g of x, the example we just did, but instead of going over the x-axis, which we just did with the other one, you went over the y-axis instead this time. So if we took this one over the y-axis. What would be the graph? Give you a hint there. Anytime you go over the y-axis, it's a horizontal. X is going to become negative x. Look at what the graph's going to do. Draw it and say, oh, I see why it is what it is. Answer that one. Here's a way to be able to, to use your graphing calculator to help you out. So be able to follow these steps. And then you can put y1 equals plug in your equation, and then y2 equals put a negative in front of the y1, okay, which would be a reflection about the x-axis, and then put in a negative x in there, which is a reflection about the y-axis. And then you can see what the graphs look like. Try that out for yourself so you are able to use your graphing calculator, which is going to be extremely important on your diploma exam. And your two final questions to really get to see if you do you understand this information. Good luck with that, and we will discuss any of the issues with reflections in class.